questions because um, I felt like actually like you said, like you get the feel of a, of a 15 day shoot. That's just it. I, I got the feelings of things. I don't think that I learned a lot about the movie. I think that I learned a lot about how the cast and crew felt about the movie and the making of it. And not that there were things that I needed to learn about the movie, but like, again, it was a different angle. This was more personable. This was more congenial. This was less expository. Yeah. I, I, I just like that for once you actually get to see the crew actually doing work that crews do on so many movies that you watch and granted their movies, you watch the behind, like, so on Wes Craven's new nightmare there in the beginning, obviously it's meant to be a farce, but they're filming insert shots and close-ups of Freddy, but the camera's 30 feet away, and it doesn't even have a giant lens on. So you're kind of thinking, that's not... Obviously, it's a movie, right? There's so many things that I can get over, but I hate, I've always hated behind the scenes, like movies about movies, because the, mo the footage would never turn out good, but mm -hmm. obviously it does in that world. So that's why I felt comfortable with this, just watching the mundane aspects of it, because that's how much set life is for me. But I get, guess for an outsider who's looking for something else, I guess it's not as thrilling. This seemed to be a neat setup. I, I, could you tell me the way that they they set up um, Walrus Yes, which you guys, I don't know if we said it yet. That's on YouTube if anyone yeah. wants to go find that, um, the whole thing. Uh, but so Kevin Smith j basically just had his, his buddy, Jason Mewes, on the set with the camera, and they planned on doing this making of thing the whole time. It's not like they were just taking little clips of, you know, that, that didn't make it on screen or when they just kept running, kept rolling, I should say. They had him there as his friend just filming all this stuff, filming stuff actively. Does that does that really happen much, Mark, with yeah. films? Does it? Okay. So there's, that... there's EPK on a lot of film sets, and so that's a lot of the behind the scenes. And then on every set, you have a set photographer. So EPK is all the behind the scenes interviews. So you got a, a, an actor like, so we'll be working on a TV show for a pilot or a show gets picked up to series. An actor will do a scene. So then you walk him down to the second floor or something like that. And then he does the interview. Like, you know, what do you think about the show? My character is a former Marine who became a cop, who became a robot. And it's just loaded with heart. And I'm a single dad and I got to have a relationship. You know, like talking like that kind of stuff. Were you just talking about RoboCop or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just very, uh, yeah, but but it's very formal, and I don't like watching EPK. I really don't. And it's kind of behind the scenes because this is people talking about, oh, this movie's amazing. Like, I liked knowing that Kevin's – like, that. so in the beginning during the Tech Scout, uh, there's a lot of jokes about te Tech Scouts where it's just a bunch of group of groups of people talking, and Kevin Smith didn't even want to be there. And it's just it, – it, it's what a Tech Scout looks like, which made me really happy. And then he fell through the set, Kevin Smith did, the Walrus Tank set. Because it shows how flimsy some of these sets can be. That made me happy. I don't know, just actors complaining about the food. Like, hey, we're working over... And so they had second dinner, which means their day went really long. And they're like, we're going to be eating cabbage in tiny rooms. It's just, you know, you watch those guys who did the special effects with the squibs on the doors. They look like that's what you... These are the, all the guys you work with. All the people. I don't know, man. But yeah, so there are, there are things like this. This is rare to have Jason Mewes running around like that. But I don't know, man. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess this is a, there aren't many like this one, but there are a lot of behind the scenes filmings, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I, see, I didn't even realize that. I, I figured that when you had that being done, it was because it was for, you know, the 200, 300 million dollar movie. And they're like, you know, $5 million of the budget is just to have this for the, you know, the DVD extra or something. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I didn't necessarily have expect that, that for, for like the normal scale movie for the non mega movie. I didn't expect that. And what I like, what you know, Kevin Smith did the does these behind the scenes. So he he podcasted about this movie while he was making it, and then he filmed the behind the scenes footage and kind of showcased that just to maybe show people that you could do this. You could. I, this is how it happens. This is my first day, and I like how on the first day of filming, right, Kevin Smith looked very chipper and happy, but then the fifth day he just looked exhausted and ready to die. Like that's what set life is, man. Monday you're like. You're still tired because you didn't get much of a weekend. But then on Friday, you're, you just look gross and you're just trying to survive. And then you come back Monday and then you're just that following Friday, you're tired again. So I like that evolution of this on there. And I like that Kevin Smith is like, I'm late again, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, and he likes to edit, though. So I, I dig that. I don't know, I, I don't know, you know. You know what's interesting on the commentary for this? The one scene I didn't really like in this movie was when Genesis Rodriguez or Allie does that long monologue to Teddy. Mm-hmm. 
You know, he wrote that like the night before because he just liked Genesis Rodriguez and wanted to give her more to do. And that's I didn't why, like that scene either. Yeah, and it feels very out of place, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, she, she, she's fine. She does a good job. But he just wrote that because he's like, I want to give her more to do. So that's why that scene does not fit in the film. Nope. But that's, I kind of like that about Smith, though. You learn the bumps and bruises of his production and why he does each thing. And I kind of dig that about him. I like the transparency. Uh, but I also liked, you know, Kurtzman got, he was really praising Kurtzman though. Did that make you happy? Robert Kurtzman? Yeah, he, he, boy, he was really appreciative of that guy. He, every time he walked by, it's like, look at this guy. This, this guy's like a god among men. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. When you're making a $3 million, $3 million movie, you got to make those compliments because these people are not working for a lot of money. <laughs> How does, so are they just agree? Is everyone just agreeing to take way less than their quote? Or would someone like Kurtzman be operating more on some kind of a union pricing? Well, he, he, like he, he's a co-owner of KMB. So I feel like he, and, and North Carolina is not necessarily a union state. Yeah, there is IATSE, uh, for sure. You have to be part of a union. But I wouldn't say it's as stringent in, in you know, as New York or California in this movie. Uh, but for $3 million, I think people must have a- a- accepted it. I mean, but if you think about it, so let's say Justin Long and Haley Joel Osment and Genesis Rodriguez took it for scale. I mean, they're still only on the, on the set for 10 days. So they're still making a bunch of money, and they got a movie coming out that's pretty crazy. So I'm sure a lot of people took scale. The crew was small. There wasn't much prep in the film, and the house that they used, they didn't have to build. The only build they had was the what they kept calling it something in the um, in Walrus. Yes, the pool area. I mean, that was probably the biggest expenditure they had of the entire set to build that. Oh, they, there was like the 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 tennis club or something. Yeah, they kept calling it something, but I forgot. Yeah. But no, but I don't know. I also liked, you know, their beginning shot about how they're they're only going to get one exterior of the house, so they want it to be awesome. Uh, so they have that cool crane shot there that cost them money. I'm sure the walrus shot cost them a lot of money. I bet they were happy to get rid of that crane. I guess this movie just comes down to the producer and the line producer breaking down each day and figuring out how much crew is needed to fit that budget. And then Kevin Smith paid two hundred thousand dollars for the additional photography with Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, I still can't get over that that role. Like I, I <laughs> that, you have a point. I I did not enjoy any. I, it was fun watching him eat, but I, I I the whole time I'm watching him eat. Every time I've seen the movie, I'm just like, why is Johnny Depp wearing that ridiculous nose prosthesis? And why is what is with this? And but watching him eat was funny. Don't get me wrong. And his this accent and I don't know. Like I was I was equal parts entertained and aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Smith showed up and didn't know what he was doing. Because, I mean, when Johnny Depp agrees to do your movie, you can't really. So, you know, it's funny. Ke- uh, he got a verbal yes from Kevin Smith. And one of the producers of the film was like, okay, cool. We'll send paperwork to, to Depp's people. And Kevin Smith was like, no, don't do that. He's like, once his rep- representation learns that he's doing a stupid wal- R-rated walrus movie, they're going to tell him no. So they <laughs> kept it under wraps. And then when he showed up working scale for the production, uh, you can't really be like, hey, Johnny, can you not wear that prosthetic nose? Can I... So you're kind of stuck with that. So Johnny Depp was making, like, what, $2,000 a day? Yeah, probably SAG minimum, uh, whatever kind of that thing. is. <laughs> I mean, he's making $50 million for Pirates, so I think he just did it out of fun, right? But basically, yeah, you're doing... This is like a pro bono at that point. <laughs> but isn't, that, like, isn't that crazy, though? Like, I just, I don't know. Did you know that Johnny Depp was in this when you watched it for the first time? Well, I, I actually knew uh, ahead of time. I, I just I found out, you know, social media ruined it or something. I don't remember. Got it. I don't even remember that either. So weird. I remember, though, he was on screen. He was on screen for no joke, like two full minutes before I had looked at the person with the movie with me. And I would be like, is that? And then she said, yeah, that's. That's Johnny Depp. I'm like, that's not Johnny Depp. She's like, that's a, like, damn. Like, so it was so <laughs> out there because the whole, I can't do it. Whatever. The whole voice that he was doing and he's he's talking the lines through the food that apparently he's really eating on screen. Yeah, knocking that back. <laughs> so how did Howard? Well, how was he able to afford such such luxurious places when he? And he, but he's also traveling across Canada while he owns this manor. Correct. I mean, does he own it? There's a question. Does he really own it? Because his knickknacks are all over the place. Yeah. I mean, but I wonder how much of his place. That's true. Yeah, it, it is well decorated. And Justin Long asked to see the restroom. He wouldn't have necessarily predicted 
that it, yeah, there's a lot of you're right. You're right. Because part of me was thinking like this was just a previous victim's home, and maybe his previous victim was someone who was affluent and under the radar and didn't have a family, so it would take a long time to kind of catch up that they were dead or missing. But no, you make a good point. It's so well decorated. He he must just be that rich eccentric who's doing this batshit shit. Who built that pool for him? The indoor yeah. dungeon walrus, walrus alcove. habitat. Yeah. <laughs> That's in his house. He he probably went to the zoo and he was he was like, oh, who built this? Do, do you have the information for those contractors? I want to do a grotto for my pool. And they're like, yeah, whatever, dude. We're happy to share with you who this contractor is. And then, like, he just has the, the contractor sign some kind of non-disclosure agreement. Slap him a couple he could have told him he was an exotic extra. animal collector. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, slap him a few extra bucks. I, I, I guess. But, yeah, that, that, that was elaborate. I mean, you, you know from film production, indoor water is expensive. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, then you got to deal with the electricity and setting all that up. It was a good looking set they built, and the projectors you know were a good. Though? The projectors were a good idea to save money. Unlike unlike a pool though, or like an actual terrarium, that thing did not have filtration. Remember, that was just stagnant with dead dudes at the bottom. Yeah, that was weird. Why do you leave so the dead that people? That probably in made there? it a lot more affordable. A yeah, lot more affordable. True. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. He that just probably left. had the budget. You didn't have to plumb through the walls or anything. Yeah, he just left those dead bodies in there. That was gross. Yeah, that was that was that was that was sick. That was macabre. And, and uh, just poor Justin Long can't swim because he's in this suit and he's seeing that under the water. It's like like you're literally seeing what you're about to be if you don't get your walrus ass up out of the water. And then he went full walrus. He went full walrus, which is such a funny term because I always think of Robert Downey Jr. saying full retard. Oh yeah, you never go. You never go to. <laughs> I mean, that, oh man! It, but Long pulled it off too, though. I thought Long was really solid in this movie. I like him oh, a lot. He he did an outstanding job. I mean, just you know, he went all right. So I guess <laughs> I guess we should start in the beginning. Uh, he is a podcaster uh, of a, po- a podcast called Wait. I'm gonna spell it out because you don't want to say it first. The N O T S E E Party. The Not C Party, and basically where he's just a massive jerk who goes and does things and then tells his buddy Teddy who just laughs at a lot of his stuff. And he's successful, right? I mean, we had a question from Cinema Recall. And so their question was, let me look this up real quick. Cinema Recall asks, of course, I uh, can't find it. And Cinema Recall is another podcast, by the way, chiming in. A very good podcast, read by some old friends of ours, uh, The Vern. I don't know if you guys, uh, but look it up. Video Vanguard, I think that's him. And then also cinema recall but here here is the, the 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 question how the hell did justin long's character make a career with his podcast it wasn't that good to begin with how could he afford a trip on just ad spots alone looking forward to your spot uh, your thoughts also shameless plug on our short episode so cinema recall also talks about tusk on their podcast but i mean 2014 right this is when nerdist was in full effect this is when mark Marin was in full effect and so he's also doing live shows i mean Listen, podcasts were big in 2014, but it sounds like he had been on this podcast for several years before that, right? Well, I got the idea, or not the idea, I got the feeling that they had gone what I'll call air quotes professional, where they are solely doing this for their job for years. And and there was some line at some point, I don't remember what it was, that made it sound like when we fill in the blank here, basically transitioned to going pro. So they were probably doing this together for years as buddies and then they've been doing this as professional in 2014 if you had a podcast for five or seven years by then you were probably around since podcasts became a a, even remotely mainstream thing yeah if you think about it uh so i used to listen to the ricky gervais podcast when i lived in korea that was about 2008 and they did the free podcasts that were absolutely massive they just did like six episodes and then, you know, the second series, but they didn't do it every week. But that was gigantic. And then you had Nerdist come around, then you had Mark Marin, Kevin Smith, and a few, so I, I'm missing other people. But yeah, if they were early adopters, they have a lot of listeners. And I doing, think so. Yeah. yeah. Like it, they could have been doing this for a decade. What if and they then, were doing this since 2004? And so the ad revenue that they're making, I'm sure they could afford by then. Like they obviously were, right? Well, so, it's basically just a plane ticket. Yeah, and he was complaining and, about how he couldn't really afford it anyway. Yeah, I mean, he, he might have been looking at, you know, like $700 trip, you know, a flight, 
couple nights in a in a cheap hotel. He oh, that's right, it because it, it, he was just going to turn around, but then once he found this guy, it's like, well, I'm just going to stay at his place for a couple nights and hear his stories. Mm-hmm. Now he was 